What's going on, gardeners? It is Wednesday, March 9th, and it's a beautiful spring-like day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Today, I want to share with all of you the number one mistake that new gardeners make when it comes to planting and transplanting cucurbit plants and how to avoid it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Cucurbits are a family of plants also known as the gourd family. When I talk about cucurbits, I am talking about very popular plants like zucchini, squash, pumpkins, gourds, cucumbers, honeydew, watermelon, a cantaloupe, and anything else in that general melon category that we're so used to growing in our gardens in the summertime. The challenge that new gardeners make when it comes to growing these cucurbit plants is that they generally plant them along the same schedule as they do with the number one most popular plant grown in the United States, the tomato plant. A lot of people follow the exact same planting schedule and that can lead to a disaster. Allow me to explain. Right here to my side, I have all of my tomato, pepper, and eggplant transplants that I started from seed over a month ago. And all three of these different species of plants have two things in common. Number one, they are three of the most popular plants that are planted in vegetable gardens throughout the United States and much of the world. And number two, they are all part of the same family of nightshades. So all three of these species are related. Now I mentioned that I started these seeds over a month ago, and that's because tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants have a very long period of time from planting the seed to germination to being large enough for transplants. Generally, it takes six to eight weeks from you planting that seed and getting them large enough to be transplanted out in the garden. From there, the average day to maturity where you're picking the first fruit, depending on the variety, is usually anywhere from 65 to 80 days from transplant. So when you add the six to eight weeks uh, just to get your seeds ready for transplant, and then another 65 to 80 days, you're talking anywhere from 16 to 20 weeks from you planting that seed and then it germinating and then you actually being able to harvest ripe fruit off of that plant. That is a really long time. It's for that reason that we immediately try to rush these transplants out in the garden as soon as last chance of frost has passed. And these plants are more than capable because as long as you keep the frost and freeze off of them, they're fairly tough plants. So if you're not getting any more frosts and freezes, these can tolerate nights in the 40s, even down to the upper 30s. They will bounce right back as soon as it warms up during the day. So it's generally in our best interest to get these plants out early so they bloom and they flower and fruit for us quickly, especially in areas of the southeast because these varieties of plants are really sensitive to humidity and when it gets too hot and humid during the day and the night, we run into fertility issues, especially with tomatoes. It's for that reason that you usually see me rush these types of plants out in the garden as soon as possible. In fact, so tough are nightshade plants that I always start additional seedlings even earlier just so I can put an initial first wave out in my garden before all last chance of frost has passed and I just cover them if we're going to get a frost. We are actually supposed to get a hard freeze of 26 degrees this weekend and all I'm going to do is just cover them in mulch and a couple of buckets and they should sail through just fine. So with preparation, you can even get your nightshades out early and as long as you simply keep the frost and freeze off of them, it's just fine. That is not the case with cucurbits, and this is the common mistake that cucurbit growers make. Because your nightshade varieties are so incredibly popular, they're usually the varieties that new gardeners start with because they're easy to grow and everybody loves them. And the issue is that people say, well, they are frost, uh, they're frost sensitive, they're sensitive to freeze, so I'm going to plant them like this. That means I can plant all my other frost and freeze sensitive plants on the exact same schedule. That's not the case with cucurbits. Cucurbits do very poorly when temperatures fall below 50 degrees. Cucurbits are not just sensitive to frost and freeze. They're sensitive to chilly temperatures overall, and temperatures that your nightshades can bounce back from can cause massive damage to your cucurbits, if not outright kill them. Now, point number one, as I mentioned, cucurbits are not just sensitive to frost and freeze, but to overall cold weather. Not this winter, but the winter before, I performed an experiment where I kept this hinged hoop house above freezing all winter long, and in it I planted 
basil, I planted tomatoes, I planted peppers, and I planted cucumbers. All of my tomatoes and peppers and basil made it through the entire winter unscathed because they never got frost or freeze under here. However, all of my cucumbers died because while I was able to keep it above freezing here, the nights were typically in the upper 30s and the 40s, and that just killed all of my cucurbits because they are far too temperature sensitive. You should not plant your cucurbits until the nighttime temperatures are stable at least at 50 degrees. They may be able to tolerate a dip in the 40s here and there, but if it's happening with frequency, like it usually is right after your last chance of frost, your tomatoes and your peppers can take it, your cucurbits cannot. They will have nutrient uptake issues, they will turn yellow, they may even rot away and die. At the very least, if they survive it, you'll actually be setting yourself back. And there's no reason to do this to you because cucurbits grow like lightning. Whereas your nightshade varieties typically take anywhere from 7 to 14 days to germinate on a seedling heat mat, your cucurbits will generally germinate within 2 to 4 days on a seedling heat mat. They germinate like lightning. And then from there, whereas your nightshades typically take 6 to 8 weeks to become large enough to transplant out in your garden, your cucurbits are usually ready in about 2 to 3 weeks. So from the time you plant your cucurbit seed to the time that they're actually ready for planting in the garden, it's only about three to four weeks. From there, most of your cucurbits are ready anywhere from 45 to 60 days. So from the day you plant that seed into the ground or into your pot or your seedling mix, you are usually eating the first fruits off of your cucurbit plants within eight to 10 weeks. Compare that to your nightshade seedlings where after eight weeks, they're just ready to go out and transplant. So in the time that it takes you to place your tomato, pepper, or eggplant seed and just get them out as transplants into the garden, you could be eating off of your cucurbit plants. For that reason, I haven't even started my cucurbit seed yet. I haven't even started my zucchini, my cucumbers, my pumpkins, my uh, cantaloupes, my watermelon. And I will not start the seed, I will not even plant that seed until my last chance of frost because they germinate and they're ready for transplanting so quickly, I don't want them out into my garden until temperatures are adequately warm enough. Like I said, when you get your last chance of frost, you're still typically getting nights that frequently dip into the upper 30s or into the 40s. And while that's fine for your nightshades, that is too cold for your cucurbits. So it's actually best that you wait until your last chance of frost to plant that seed because you want to wait three to four weeks after your last chance of frost because by then, usually night times are sufficiently warm enough and you won't get any more than the occasional dip here or there under 50 degrees and they should be just fine at that point. Now, while this will take some self-control and some patience, you will be better off for it. And that's because, like I said, there's no big rush to get your cucurbits out into the garden. They flower and fruit so quickly that even if if you wait three to four weeks after you plant your tomato transplants to get those cucurbits out in the garden, you will probably still be picking your first zucchini or your first cucumber before you're picking any of your tomatoes. That is how fast they grow. So don't get them out so early because they will suffer in the cold. They may outright die. In fact, the transplants that you wait until it's nice and warm out at night to put in the ground that never go through any stress could actually surpass any of your cucurbits that you plant out earlier in the year that see that those temperatures in the 30s and the 40s at night that suffer all that stress. You will get healthier plants and overall you're not saving yourself any time to get your cucurbits out early in the garden like you are your nightshades. You're just causing potential problems for yourself. And that right there is the number one mistake that most new growers of cucurbits make. While I am a big proponent of getting your nightshade transplants out in the garden as early as reasonable and safe, don't do that with your cucurbits. Take your time. They germinate so quickly and they fruit so quickly that you're not really saving yourself any time getting them out nice and early at the first chance that you can. You will have better success if you just delay them a few weeks and you get them out when temperatures are sufficiently warm. So I just wanted to take a few minutes and give that tip to all of you. It is a tip that took me years to figure out on my own that I wasn't gaining anything rushing out my cucurbits into the garden. I have since changed my ways and delaying has made the process a lot easier with no sacrifice in timing. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If 
you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the gardening products and tools that I use in my garden, they are all linked down in the Amazon storefront link in the video description. And also, while you're there, check out the Spreadshop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Oh boy, Dale, this looks really good. We have grandma's organ mix with just a little bit of dry food to cut the fat. Oh, Dale is waiting so patiently for his food. That looks really good. This is how good Dale is and how he waits for his food until I say, okay, good boy. That was very good, Dale. Oh, I can already tell he loves it. He loves it. Thank you so much, Grandma. Thank you.